Cold kills faster than bullets. That's not drama. That's math. On the Eastern Front, during World War II, men froze solid in just a few hours if they got it wrong. And, you know, buried deep in that frozen arithmetic was a solution so simple it embarrassed engineers decades later. One brick. No pipes, no moving parts, no steady flame. Just a single dense block of clay turned into a weapon against winter. And for years it stayed quiet. Not because it was secret, but because, honestly, no one believed something that basic could actually work. This wasn't comfort heating. This was survival heating. And that difference really matters. This problem was born where supply lines failed, and men still had to live. The Soviet war effort was built on endurance, not elegance. Forward bunkers, dugouts, partisan hideouts, and temporary command posts were often weeks away from any sort of resupply. Fuel was scarce. Wood was wet. Metal stoves were dangerous. Chimneys froze shut. And, well, every visible plume of smoke invited artillery. Engineers and frontline troops faced a brutal equation. They needed heat. They could not afford fire all night. And if they got ventilation wrong, Carbon monoxide would finish the job the cold started. The answer wasn't a new device. It was, well, a shift in thinking. Stop heating air. Start storing heat. The brick wasn't the invention, the thermal logic was. Calling it a one-brick heater really undersells what was actually happening. The brick was just the medium. The real innovation was, you know, using thermal mass as a heat battery. Dense clay bricks absorb heat slowly and, well, release it even slower. That's physics, not folklore. Soviet-era bricks, especially the older ceramic ones, were heavy thick and, you know, imperfect in all the right ways. When heated thoroughly, they held energy just like a sponge holds water. Soldiers would place a single brick directly into a small fire source. Sometimes it was a crude trench stove, sometimes an ammo box converted into a burner, and sometimes just a hole in the ground lined with scrap metal. The fuel didn't really matter much. Twigs, paper, broken crates, anything that burned hot and fast would do. Ten to fifteen minutes was enough. How one brick quietly changed the math inside bunkers. Once fully heated, the brick was removed from the fire and placed on something non-flammable. A mess tin lid, a flat stone, a piece of metal roofing. It was then positioned near the centre of the bunker or under sleeping platforms. No flame, no smoke, no sound. What followed was hours of slow, steady, radiant heat. Not enough to make you sweat. Enough to keep fingers working. Enough to keep boots from freezing solid. Enough to prevent frostbite while men slept shoulder to shoulder in a space carved out of frozen earth. In sub-zero conditions, you know, raising interior temperature by even a few degrees really mattered. That difference kept weapons functional, kept rations from turning into ice blocks, and most importantly, kept men alive long enough to fight the next day. This wasn't just theory, it was, in fact, field-tested necessity. 
After the war, engineers looked at the concept and, well, shrugged. No moving parts, no controls, no output ratings, and honestly, no innovation to patent. But they missed the context. The one brick heater wasn't meant to replace a stove. It was meant to replace continuous combustion. That's the distinction. Most heating systems fail in survival scenarios because they depend on constant fuel, constant airflow, and, um, constant attention. The brick required none of that. You invested fuel once. You got heat back for hours. Carbon monoxide was the enemy you couldn't see. One of the deadliest threats in wartime bunkers wasn't enemy fire. It was bad air. The brick method solved this cleanly. Once the brick was heated, the fire was extinguished completely. No combustion, no fumes, no oxygen consumption. That allowed bunkers to be sealed tighter against the cold without risking poisoning. This is one of the most overlooked advantages of the method, and, well, it's directly applicable today. The exact steps soldiers followed because, well, mistakes weren't forgiven. Find a solid brick with no visible cracks. Cracked bricks could split under heat and honestly cause burns. Heat it aggressively. Not warm. Hot. Fully charged with energy. Use a barrier underneath. Metal, stone or thick earth will do just fine. Never bear wood, you know. Place it where radiant heat could spread evenly. Near sleeping areas, not tucked away, that's important. Extinguish the fire completely before settling in. Absolutely essential, really. That was it. No adjustments, no babysitting. And it worked night after night. Why this still matters for modern survivalists? If you're camping in cold weather and, well, fuel is limited, heating stones or bricks at the end of your fire session and bringing them into your shelter gives you warmth without maintaining a flame. The principle scales, clay pots, dense stones, even concrete blocks in emergency conditions. The material matters less than the density and dryness. The lesson isn't use a brick. The lesson is store heat deliberately. This trick survived because it respected reality. The Soviet one-brick heater didn't rely on optimism. It respected scarcity, it respected physics, and it respected the fact that people had to sleep. It was quiet, it was stealthy, it didn't fail catastrophically, and, you know, it worked when conditions were stacked against you. Eighty years later, it still holds up because the environment hasn't changed. Cold is still cold. Fuel is still finite. And honestly, simple systems still outperform complex ones when failure isn't an option. This wasn't hidden because it was secret. It was ignored because it was humble.
And, well, history is full of humble solutions that kept people alive while louder inventions got the credit. If this kind of grounded, field-tested history is what you come here for, make sure you subscribe to History HQ. Share this with someone who understands that real survival isn't about gadgets. It's about thinking clearly under pressure. And stay with us as we keep uncovering the forgotten logic that shaped history when failure meant freezing to death.